Let's see how we can all use ChatGPT to elevate our LinkedIn profile. Let's go. What is up everyone? Ronnie here. Welcome back to the channel. This is the place where we talk about Canva and sometimes, like today, about other things. Other things related to content creation, other things related to boosting your career, boosting your business, boosting your search for new clients out there. Today, I want to create another tutorial about ChatGPT because let's admit it, I'm obsessed about this new technology. It is so powerful that I just cannot talk about it. So let's talk about it and let's see how we can use ChatGPT to optimize, to supercharge, to boost, to elevate our LinkedIn profile. So why LinkedIn? Well, very simple. LinkedIn is the social network where you need to be and you need to be creating content if you want, I would say finding client or getting hired or getting in front of the important people. And yes, there are a lot of other, maybe more popular, more fun to use social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, but LinkedIn has that professional flavor to it. So in my opinion, if you are serious about building your business or your personal brand, you need to look great on LinkedIn. And even if you're not sharing content on LinkedIn yet, make an effort and clean up your profile because this is the bare minimum in my opinion. So let's see how we can use our friend GPT here to help us do this difficult work, I would say, of updating or creating our LinkedIn profile. So let's have a quick look at my profile. We're going to be using my profile as the example because this is what I want to optimize. Obviously, you will be optimizing your profile. So this is what it looks like. And I already spent a good amount of time, not recently, but in the past working on this. Okay. So it is not completely up to date, but there's already a good amount of hours put behind this actual profile. So a LinkedIn profile is typically made out of your photo, your banner, then you have a headline right here. Mine is very short. Some keywords, if you've turned your uh, profile into a creator profile. So some people uh, might have the option to do this. Then you'll have some other sections like your analytics, etc, etc. A featured section, which is very important if you want to feature some of your work, some of your courses, some of your tutorials, blog posts, this is where you should do it. Your activity feed. And then this section, the about section, which is pretty much your uh, description, your presentation. We call it the about section. That's how it's officially called. And this section is long enough for you. You see here, I'm using almost all the available characters. So this is the old version of my about section. But as you can see, it's a pretty long section where you can fit a lot of information. And a lot of people are not using this section correctly. They are either not using the about section at all, which in my opinion is a huge mistake because this is a valuable piece of information that any recruiter will at least check out and scan through if they are considering hiring you. Me, when I was working at Canva and needed to hire people, I always checked out their LinkedIn profile and headed towards their about section because this is really where you can judge people's creativity, how well written is their about section actually written. And yeah, it tells a lot about people. If there is nothing, my first impression was, oh, they either don't know this is important or they are too lazy to spend an hour or two figuring out how to tell their story. Because this section is really where you need to tell your story, your professional, your career, story to the rest of the world. So you need to have something good in this section. And that's exactly where our friend GPT is going to come and help us because ChatGPT knows the entire internet. So let's use that power. Let's use that superpower and supercharge our about section. So because I'm going to be leaning on that information, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy all of this information right here all the way to here. Okay, so copy this and I have pasted that in a Google Doc right here. You could use a Canva Doc if you want, but I want to keep a version of that current about section in case maybe something goes wrong or in case I realize, okay, I made a mistake. I want to go back to the previous version. If I just erase it, then it's gone. 
and I spent a long time working on this one already. So I prefer to have a backup version right here in this document. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. We are going to start from our existing content. If you don't have any information in your about section, I suggest you spend an hour or two searching for other tutorials on YouTube and figuring out like what type of information you should have there. Do not start from scratch because you need some information to feed to ChatGPT in order to receive some valuable input. So if you don't have anything yet, I would definitely start looking at my resume and at least like list the different experiences and not just I worked there, I did that, I worked there, but try to explain it as a story. Start with this. Do not be lazy here. It is important. Otherwise, the outcome is not going to look great. You're going to have like a generic about section, which is exactly what you don't want. So do not be lazy here. Trust me on this one. Start with a base. All right. So that's the first step. Now let's move on to the second step, which consists of figuring out your tone of voice. I believe it is super important to be clear on your tone of voice or the desired tone of voice you want to use and feed that information together with your base information to ChatGPT. I don't know if you remember the previous tutorial I shot about ChatGPT when I tried to turn ChatGPT into my personal assistant. In that video, I taught you that the more input you give ChatGPT, the better the output you will receive from it. So if we want to be creating a very personalized about section for our LinkedIn profile, which is something very personal, what you don't want to do is to simply ask GPT, write the about section of my LinkedIn profile. You don't want to do that. Or I've seen other tutorials on YouTube where the presenter asks, can you write the about section of my LinkedIn profile based on my resume? and then he pastes the entire resume. You don't want to do this because it's gonna be quite generic. The information in your resume is not gonna show your tone of voice. It's just gonna be a bunch of facts, a bunch of accomplishment, a bunch of objectives that you have reached with the different companies you've worked with. It doesn't tell a story per se, all right? So we need to figure out that tone of voice. I'm gonna show you two techniques I've been experimenting with, with ChatGPT, to figure out the tone of voice that you might have. The first strategy will apply if you already have a piece of content that you believe represents your personality pretty well. That piece of content could be a YouTube video you have created where you show your personality. So you will be talking and you'll be expressing stuff, but you do it in a natural way where your personality shines through. So that could be one thing. It could be a blog post that you have written with a very personal tone, like a very personal voice. So if you have something like this, great. That could be useful for figuring out your tone of voice. Or it could be something else. Like in my case, I have the introduction lectures of my courses that I try to make very personal and I leave them free for students to discover. Those are usually in the first section of the course. The first lectures of the course, I usually do this. I make them as well as I can, full of graphics and things going on. And I let people discover who is Ronnie and what is this course about, but doing my best, introducing myself under my best light. So I'm going to be using the script from one of these lectures because I think it's full of personality. I'm gonna feed that into ChatGPT. So let me show you how that would work. I have the text of the lecture right here. So it's about two pages. It's lecture one of my Canva master course. It's what is Canva and how it can help you. So I'm gonna select the entire text. It doesn't matter if it's in all different colors right here. Control C, I'm gonna come back to ChatGPT and I'm gonna start my prompt, okay? Remember, the more information you feed, the better the outcome you'll receive. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to analyze this text, this information, and then generate a list of 20 adjectives that it thinks best represents the tone of voice the writer is using. All right, so let's do this. So here is the exact prompt I'm gonna be using. Could you analyze the script of this lecture and generate a list of 20 adjectives that best describe the tone of voice the writer is using? Here is the entire transcript you need to analyze. And then I'm gonna paste 
the entire transcript, hit enter, and ChatGPT is gonna think for a little bit, and then it's gonna generate that list of 20 adjectives that will characterize, that will describe my tone of voice. So there you go. It already started passionate, enthusiastic, confident, inspiring, empowering, encouraging, knowledgeable, experienced, persuasive, positive, optimistic, determined, ambitious, helping, supportive, caring, honest, inspirational, exciting, and dedicated. All right, so now you have your top 20 adjectives that kind of define your tone of voice. And if you want to refine that, you can ask ChatGPT to refine. Great. Now, give me the five adjectives that you think are the absolute most accurate and best describe the tone of voice. And now it's going to boil it down to only five. So passionate, knowledgeable, experience, inspiring, and empowering. And I think maybe you tell me, I don't know, because you've watched my tutorials, you've maybe bought this course. You tell me, is that a list of adjectives that define the way I teach, my tone of voice when I teach? I personally think it is pretty accurate. So now we have defined our tone of voice based on some existing material. Let's keep that in a corner of our mind for when we will be asking ChatGPT to write the text for our new about section. Now, you might not have any of this stuff, like you might not have YouTube videos, you might not have blog posts or course lectures like I did. In that case, I'm gonna show you another trick that you could use to figure out a tone of voice that you find engaging. Let's assume you're new to content creation and you don't have any material to feed ChatGPT so it can give you a list of adjectives that represents your tone of voice. But you follow a couple of people online and you actually like their style or you might have stumbled upon like some very well-written blog posts or some very interesting landing pages like this landing page right here. This landing page is from a copywriter professional called Kira Hug, okay, from Australia. And I found this person by reading the Canva Learn blog, and there was an article about Kira. And so I read it, I found it interesting, I checked out her website, and it is indeed super well written. It's fun, it's dynamic. So let's read a little bit. Own your weird conversion copy. So she's a conversion copywriter, meaning someone that will optimize the copy of landing pages and anything really in order to sell. So that person knows how to write. So that's a good example, I would say, of what I would like my about section on my profile on LinkedIn to be doing, like to sell me, to sell myself. So you can read through the entire thing right here. It's pretty well done. It's super well written. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the text right here. We're not going to steal this text. We're just going to run this all the way to here. And I love the last section right here. Sign up for your weekly hug for conversion copywriting insights, business advice, and maybe even the occasional mullet giphy. I found that super witty and sharp and funny. So yeah, I'd love to be able to write like that. I'm not a copywriter, but let's see how ChatGPT defines the tone of voice of this page. Okay, so I copied the entire text, all right, that was relevant right here, and I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT. And here is the prompt that I'm gonna be using. How would you describe the copywriting style of this web page? Write a list of 10 keywords that best represent this tone of voice. Here's the transcript of the website copy. And then I just simply pasted the text from the website. Okay, let's go and see what list of 20 is gonna come up. I love that. I think this is not my tone of voice per se, but I would love my profile to be a bit more like this. All right, I think I have all the context and information I need to generate a complete and detailed prompt so that ChatGPT can start providing me with the base content for my about section. So let's do that. So the prompt I wrote is the following. Here is my LinkedIn about section. Could you rewrite it completely, keeping the information in the current version, but using a copywriting style that resembles the copy I pasted here above 
from the website. So rewrite my LinkedIn about section using a tone of voice that is unique, authentic, quirky, bold, personable, unconventional, ambitious, playful, energetic, and determined. Here is the copy of my current LinkedIn about section. So this text right here is the current version of my LinkedIn about section. So this is what you see here. I left out this part here, which I believe was not so important. So let's come back to the chat and see what ChatGPT generated from this. And so there you go. This is the content that ChatGPT generated for me. I see I still have one, two, three, four paragraphs that correspond to the four paragraphs I had here, but they are completely rewritten. It's not the same anymore. It's been written in a different tone of voice. Are you ready to build an online community that's bursting with value and authenticity? Look no further, my friend. I am Ronnie and I specialize in creating educational content and fostering genuine connections with my audience. Together, we'll teach the world how to use Canva and make enough money online to live life on our own terms. As the leader of the largest Canva community on YouTube, I know a thing or two about standing out in a crowded space, etc., etc. And it's pretty good. It has this a uh, witty, smart, like daring kind of attitude. And we can recognize that quirky, personable, unconventional uh, tone of voice in a sentence like this one right here. Canva even invited me to be an official Canva expert. And I've been proudly rocking that badge ever since. I mean, that's pretty cool. So the text goes on, etc., etc. You can read it all if you want, but I was pleasantly surprised at the quality of this outcome. So now let's move on to the next step. My next step was to ask ChatGPT to generate some punchy headlines for each of these paragraphs, okay? Because in my original piece, my original about section, I had these little paragraph headlines or taglines. I want to have that in my future profile because I do believe it helps people scan through your profile and to also hook them when they see a catchy tagline, they might be more tempted to read the entire paragraph. So that's exactly what I want to do. So I asked ChatGPT, great. Now for each paragraph, suggest five really punchy taglines, continue to use humor. And this is what it generated. Okay, so I have 20 sentences right here. Remember I had four sections, four paragraphs. So four times five, that's 20. It's just that it didn't segment each paragraph giving me five taglines per paragraph. It just gave me 20 sentences, taglines. So I checked and yeah, indeed the first five match the first paragraph and then the following five, the second paragraph and so on. So it was not too hard to actually see what goes with what. So the first paragraph, uh, the one I just read you, it suggested to me building online communities with a side of SaaS, creating value one Canva tutorial at a time, like this one, making bank and making an impact. The Canva community leader you never knew you needed, making online education fun and profitable. Okay, so from all of these taglines, I like number two, creating value one Canva tutorial at a time. I think it goes well with what's in this first paragraph. Remember, are you ready to build an online community, authenticity, etc., etc. like that. So yeah, I would pick this one. Okay, so, so far, what we've done is to generate the core copy of our about section and five taglines for each of the paragraphs. So what I've done here, I started by simply copying the information, the core information without the taglines. So these are the four paragraphs. And also on the following page right here, I started adding the taglines from all the taglines, the 20 taglines generated by ChatGPT. I added in black, the ones that I think I'm going to be using because they are good. They reflect the paragraph pretty well. And in purple right here, I added uh, those that I'm not quite sure yet, but it's still okay, but maybe they could be refined. So, so far, this is what I have. Creating value one tutorial at a time. Second paragraph, the official Canva expert with a badge to prove it. I like this one. It's witty, but not completely sure. Third paragraph, 
helping companies look as good as they are. And I really like this one tagline because it matches well the paragraph which is, as a branding coach and trainer, I work with organizations and entrepreneurs around the world to improve their visual identity and online presence, leading training, workshops, and consultancies in over 20 countries. I've worked with big names like Facebook, Canva, the World Fair Trade Organization, and Oxfam. So the tagline, helping companies look as good as they are, I like that because it has this side of working with social businesses, Oxfam and the World Fair Trade Organization, like as good as they are, they're like social good companies and helping them look good because I delivered workshops and webinars about branding. So making them look good, improving their visual identity. So all of that is kind of encapsulated in that tagline. So I like it. And then the last one, telling impactful stories through digital content. Not quite sure with this one, but I kept it here. So let's focus on the second paragraph here. You see the tagline, not quite happy with it. Let's see if chat can provide me some other options. Okay, so if you're not completely satisfied with an answer, you can always come back. That's what I did here. I asked chat, give me 10 more punchy taglines that summarize this paragraph. And I pasted the paragraph and I added one extra line here, one specific request. I asked chat, insert a relevant emoji at the beginning of the tagline, because I believe a tagline with a relevant emoji is more powerful than just a tagline. So again, pasted the entire paragraph here and tried my luck. So here are some of the answers. Mastering Canva and design with me as your guide. Nah, don't like that. Leveling up your business with my video courses. No. Propelling your business to new heights. Nah. Empowering entrepreneurs worldwide. That's very cliche and not saying anything. Becoming a Canva pro with my courses. No. Nope. Making an impact with my online courses. Meh. Bringing design education to your fingertips. No. Transforming your business with digital storytelling. Rocking the online course game. No, that's too pretentious. Official Canva expert here to teach you the ropes. Not really. So didn't quite hit the mark, but that's okay. Let's move on to the next step. The next step consists of really fine tuning that copy that ChatGPT generated for you. Okay. This is where you need to kind of like get in the dirt and read everything and really understand process and run that through your filter to see if you're happy with it. So that's what I did. I started by underlining all the passages that I didn't quite like. So you see here, for example, paragraph two, but it doesn't stop here or it doesn't stop there. I don't quite like that. Again, like, and I've been proudly rocking that badge ever since. I like the attitude, but maybe not the exact sentence like so, and so on and so forth. Like uh, you can see here, you can pause and read if you want, but there are a couple of passages in that text that it generated that I didn't quite like or didn't quite hit the mark. For example, here, I've been on the road with my own nonprofit for 10 years. And I think here we should add, maybe in parentheses, but the name of the nonprofit, Fair Trade Connection. So these were the parts where I think we needed to try harder, refine. So let me show you how I did that. I started asking a bunch of shorter prompts, like create a punchy and humorous tagline based on the idiom, knowledge is power. Why this one? Well, I figured I don't want to start this paragraph by but it doesn't stop here. Here we talk on the first paragraph, we talk about knowledge, okay? How I can teach you some knowledge that will help you create a business online and live on your own terms. So here, I want to start with this knowledge is power kind of idea, but I don't want to write it as such. So create a punchy and humorous tagline based on the idiom, knowledge is power. Powering up with knowledge, one witty quip at a time. What the heck? No, this was not good. Like not what I was hoping for. So I tried something different. Okay. I tried to approach chat from a different angle. I asked, add a humorous and punchy subtitle to the headline, knowledge is power. And here is the answer. Unleashing your inner genius with a side of sass. I mean, no, dude, this not good. So obviously didn't accept that as an answer. I asked for more. Give me 10 more options. When chat is not 
giving you the right answers, ask for more, more options. So I got a bunch of options, but they were all mediocre. Becoming a know-it-all one point at a time, empowering yourself with the ultimate weapon, knowledge. Uh, not good. So, you know, I tried different ways of getting at this first sentence of the paragraph, couldn't find it. So I let go for now and I asked the chat to do something else, okay? Find the most appropriate emoji for this tagline, creating value one tutorial at a time, okay? So I started thinking, okay, let's try generating emojis for all of the other taglines that I already feel are good enough. So a pile of books. Yeah, but I'm not using books. So I wrote, find a sassier emoji. Woman doing this, I mean, not great. Give me five sassier, funnier ones. Woman doing this, painting nails, woman raising hands, guy doing this or detective. This was pretty much garbage. So I decided not to go with any of this and come back to my idea of knowledge is power. So I tried a different approach. Finish this sentence. Knowledge is power, but branding is dot, dot, dot. Why do I talk about branding? Well, simply because in that paragraph, I start introducing my branding workshops and consultancies. So I want to make the link between, okay, you can get the knowledge through the online courses, but I also have the branding. So I needed to make that connection between paragraph two and paragraph three. Therefore, I want to start with something related to knowledge is power transitioning to branding. So hence this new idea, finish this sentence, knowledge is power, but branding is dot, dot, dot. And here is what chat said. But branding is the secret weapon that makes you stand out from the crowd. Now, that was much better. And I felt like we are back on track to something I could probably use, some material I could probably exploit or dig deeper. So I ask it, give me 10 more alternatives. So remember, knowledge is power, but branding is the cherry on top, taking your power to the next level, <laughs> the key to unlocking your full potential, what turns knowledge into action, the difference between blending in and standing out, the face of your knowledge and expertise, the key to success in today's digital age. Ah, this one was interesting. So I went with this one, I gave it a couple of twists and then asked ChatGPT to rephrase in a sassier way. And sassier, sassy, sassier is a term that has been working for me because it gives me a very familiar, very conversational tone of voice that I liked. And so here is what I ask chat to rephrase. For sure, knowledge is power, but branding is the key to success in today's digital age. So I pretty much like use the same thing. I just add it for sure at the beginning. And so here is what chat gave me. Sure, knowledge might be power, but let's be real. Branding is what's really going to make you a boss in today's digital world. <laughs> so I really like this one. I like that style, but it's a little bit too much. So I ask for more alternative. Give me 10 sassy alternatives. So it gave me a bunch of options here, some good and some not so good, but uh, within all of that stuff, I could dig a couple of gems. So for example, number four here, knowledge is essential, but let's not forget branding is what's really going to make you shine in today's digital landscape. Now, that was pretty good, like to make you shine in today's digital landscape. And then my eyes went back up to number two. Sure, knowledge is important, but branding is what makes you a player in today's digital game. Player, game, being a player, like, get it? So I really like this one, decided to go for this one. So that's pretty much what I did. I started working back and forth, prompting chat. For example, I'm gonna show you some other prompts that I asked chat in order to refine my copy. Improve this sentence. I work with organizations and entrepreneurs around the world to spice up their visual identity and make them shine in today's digital landscape. Remember, option number five. So here is what it gave me. I help organizations and entrepreneurs around the globe elevate their visual identity and stand out in today's digital world. Some other prompts I use. Show me 10 relevant emojis to go with this sentence. Helping companies look as good as they are. 
some emojis. Rewrite this using a tone of voice that could be described as sassy, quirky, bold. So at some point you could feel like you're running in circle. So it could be good to go back to the origin, the original prompt, okay? Because we are far down the conversation and I felt like we were losing the original tone of voice I decided to go for. So I reminded it to the chat right here. So rewrite this sentence using a tone of voice that could be described as the original 10 keywords. But my passion for impact doesn't stop there. When I'm not creating YouTube videos, I like to use my skills as an impact storyteller to help nonprofit and social businesses show, not just tell, the positive impact they are making. So that's the prompt I had so far. And then chat came up with this very sassy line. Listen up y'all, my passion for making an impact doesn't stop at YouTube videos. Oh no, no, no. When I'm not creating content, I'm using my skills as an impact storyteller to help nonprofit and social businesses prove, not just tell, the positive impact they're making. I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. And I'm not afraid to get a little quirky, unconventional and playful. That's chat bugging because it's just like repeating some of the keywords I prompted. So other than that, the beginning of the sentence has some good stuff going on. So I'm not gonna use it as is, but I'm gonna be inspired by it to come up to my final sentence, I would say. So I was not sure about how to write uh-huh, like in a negative way. So I just asked chat, give me the correct way to say uh-huh to express negation. And it says uh-huh or nah -huh are both common ways to express negation or disagreement. Perfect. So uh, again, rewrite this using a tone and then I pasted the 10 keywords. I've been on the road with my non -pro So I basically repeat the same process of asking it to rephrase my current version of where I am with a uh, paragraph so that I'm sure it's still relevant with the base tone of voice, the original tone of voice. You better believe it, I've been living my best life on the road with my own nonprofit for a solid decade. And let me tell you, I've had the privilege of working with some of the most badass change makers from all corners of the globe. That was pretty bold, but I like it. With my extensive experience in the fair trade industry, I know how to use digital content and marketing strategies to make a real impact. I'm not afraid to think outside of the box. And then again, start bugging like quirky, unconventional. So, but the beginning with the badass change makers, I like that. Feels great. Like I, I love to use this sentence. So I used a few other prompts like tighten this paragraph or write a punchy tagline with a relevant emoji for this paragraph. Give me alternatives. So these are prompts. Give me 10 synonyms for nonprofits and social businesses. I wanted to shorten this thing. Improve this sentence or make it shorter. So that all of these are prompts that I use to refine the copy of my about section. Now let me show you what it came down to. So this is a fine-tuned version and I'm not going to read it again. Uh, you can do so if you want by pausing the video, but I felt it was much better. So from here, I think it's time to move to the next step. So step number six is simply to come back to your headlines now that you have kind of like final paragraphs, text is final. So you have a better idea of how maybe to write and optimize these taglines. So I went back to chat. There were two taglines I wanted to maybe optimize, change, refine. The official Canva expert with a badge to prove it. That's for second paragraph. And then the last paragraph telling impactful stories through digital content. So I simply went back to chat and my prompt was write a punchy tagline with a relevant emoji for this paragraph. Okay. And then I pasted the paragraph. In this case, it was the last paragraph, the one about traveling with my nonprofit, etc. So the answer was like flexing muscle emoji, making an impact beyond the screen. And I didn't quite like that. So I asked chat to give me 10 alternatives. Proving impact one digital strategy at a time. Shining a spotlight on social impact. Making a difference globally. It gave me 10 and among these 10, there was number eight. Telling the world's impactful stories. And I felt like, yes, this is exactly what I was doing. 
when traveling with Fairtrade Connection. I was traveling around the world, interviewing these people, trying to tell the world's impactful stories of these change makers. So I went for this one. I choose telling the world's impactful story. And guys, this shows you the power of ChatGPT to understand the tone, but also the personality and the meaning of everything you feed it. So very impressed by the tagline generating exercise right here. So I went for this tagline. I used it here, telling the world's impactful story. I also came back to my second paragraph, which used to be the official Canva expert with a badge to prove it. I like the last part of it with a badge to prove it. It's kind of sassy, it's kind of quirky, but the official Canva expert, I'm not the official Canva expert. There are 40 other Canva experts, but one keyword I like to use in the description of our YouTube video is guru, your go-to Canva guru. So I decided to bring this one back and change official Canva expert by your official Canva guru with a badge to prove it. Because this one is quirky, right? It's a Canva guru, the official one, which doesn't mean anything because a guru, I mean, what's a Canva guru with a badge to prove it. So it refers to me being a verified expert, but without really saying it right here. So yeah, I went with this one and that's pretty much what I did for refining my taglines. Now I have my four different taglines that I was very satisfied with. So I moved on to the next step. The next step doesn't really involve ChatGPT at all because it is to add your own human touch to this text. And I believe this is a very important step. I mean, at this stage, I already put a lot of human components to my copy because I went back and forth. I changed a couple of things. I really kind of hassled ChatGPT to give me more, give me options, give me this, give me that. I already did a lot of work but I felt like it's time to shut ChatGPT down and come back to the page and simply read it and make some final tweaks. So for example, here, paragraph two, Canva even invited me to be an official Canva expert and I've been proudly rocking the badge ever since. I felt like there is one part of the story I'm not telling here. And that is the part where Canva actually hired me and then relocated me to Sydney and I worked for Canva. I don't say anywhere in the story right here that I worked for Canva. And I believe for a LinkedIn about section working for Canva, it's not something I should omit from my story. So I decided to rewrite that part and this is what I came up with. So I start here. I must have been doing something right with my content and community since Canva relocated me to Sydney to work for them. And I did so for two years. And now I continue spreading the Canva love with my own team as a verified Canva expert. And yes, I have a badge to prove it. Check out my Udemy profile if you want to see it. Wink emoji. So this is the human touch. One of the human touches I added to the final version. I added a couple more here and there, especially at the end uh, right here. Want to chat? Hit me up. I changed the contact detail. Previously it was a link to my uh, messenger message conversation and I didn't want people to reach out on messengers. So I just swapped it for my email address right here so people can contact me here. Uh, that's my professional email address. So yeah, there you go, guys. This is the final version. I'm very proud of it. Now I'm going to walk the walk. I'm going to copy this entire text and I'm going to go to LinkedIn and replace my older about section for this one. So let's do this. All right, so here we are on LinkedIn. This is my about section. You can see this is the old one. I can hit that little pencil button and start adding the new one. But before we do this, there is one thing we need to do, and that is to make sure the new version will fit in that box, meaning making sure it's not too long in terms of the character limit that is being allowed by LinkedIn. So we can actually check on this limit by clicking on the pencil icon and we'll see that the limit is 2,600 characters. Okay, currently using 2,100 roughly. So the one thing we need to do, I'm gonna close that, is to come back to our description right here. I'm gonna copy the entire thing. Yep, I have it all. 
I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna use a website, which is a simple free website that will count the character of any piece of text, all right? So I will link to that website in the description of the video, but I simply went to Google and typed in word counter or something like that. So let me show you uh, what the website looks like. So there you go, this is the website, it's called word counter, very original uh, title. I'm going to paste this and see how many characters. So I have 2,471 characters. So I'm good. I'm within the 2,600. So I can simply go back to my about section. I'm going to click the little icon right here. And I'm going to start deleting everything here. I think these are going to have to go as well as I might not have enough character for them. I might add them later, but let's paste everything first. So there you go. We have creating value one tutorial at a time, your official Canva guru with a badge to prove it, helping companies look as good as they are, telling the world impactful story. And you would appreciate the little emoji research I've done here with the nail polish, like looking as good as they are with the goat for your official Canva guru and uh, finger up for creating value one tutorial at the time. And then I need space here and that's about it. Let's save this to my new profile. Now let's see how it looks like on LinkedIn. And it looks pretty good. Very happy about this. I wish I could like have some bold going on here, but can't do that. So there you go. It is updated. It is saved successfully. This is officially my new LinkedIn about section. Woohoo! Now, strong of that success, I wanted to see if I could push ChatGPT to the ultimate frontier. And I was not an easy one. Like I wanted to know if based on that new about section, ChatGPT could actually find a better tagline, a better headline for my LinkedIn profile. My current tagline is I create Canva fans heart. So can ChatGPT provide a better one when I feed it my new about section? That's what we are about to find out. So this is the prompt. Analyze the copy of my LinkedIn about section and suggest 15 LinkedIn profile headlines. The headlines should be no longer than 30 characters. The reason why I asked less than 30 characters is that I want the tagline to be fully visible when people visit my profile from their mobile. If it's longer, they will see the beginning of your tagline and then they have to click read more to see the entire tagline. I didn't want that. That's why I have a very short tagline right now. So the tagline should be no longer than 30 characters, have one emoji and be unique, authentic, quirky, bold, like the 10 keywords from the tone of voice I opted for at the beginning. And here is the about section. And I pasted the entire about section, the new one with all the emojis. Are you ready to see the results? So there you go, 15 new headlines. Building online communities, computer emoji. Now, teaching the world to insert what motivates you to get out of bed. Yeah, fun, but nah. Creating thriving communities and income, nah. Standing out in a crowded space, no. Canva guru with a badge, goat emoji. I like this one. Canva guru with a badge and a goat emoji. Mm, that's pretty unique. That's pretty personable. It has a lot of personality. So I kept this one on ice for now. Impactful video courses, 50K plus students and counting, etc., etc. Nothing really good apart from this one, Canva guru with a badge, goat. I was not quite convinced enough to actually change I create Canva fans, but I want to leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the comment section which one you prefer. I create Canva fans, heart emoji, or Canva guru with a badge, goat emoji. Which one should be my new LinkedIn headline? Should I keep the old one? Should I go for the new one? Thank you for watching. This was a deep dive, but showing you how powerful 
ChatGPT could be if used the right way. Again, the morale of the story is the better you prompt, the better the outcome. And that's really what I want you to remember from this tutorial, this exercise. You need to know how to prompt the right way. And I'm super curious to know your opinion about this tutorial. Like this is the first time I do such a tutorial. Was it useful? Was it boring? Was it too long? Was it too much of me speaking? Let me know. Did you learn something relevant? revolutionary that blew your mind? Let me know. Do you want more tutorials about ChatGPT? Or maybe you want me to just go back to Canva and shut up about ChatGPT already? Let me know. I mean, I'm doing this for you guys, so your opinion matters. I will certainly read it in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'm going to leave you with this other ChatGPT tutorial, the one I created last week, which is about turning ChatGPT into your personal assistant. And you will also find a button to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet.